I believe it'd be worth more than all the ammunition plants and things that we could make. That's right. And all the bombs that we could have. There's nothing as great as prayer. God holds all the future in his hands. Someone asked me not long ago, said, Brother Brandon, what do you think about the future? I said, I do not know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. So that's the thing, if I can keep acquainted with him. Then, when he found out that this prophet was in Israel, he said, go fetch him. Bring him to me. And they went down and someone told him that Elisha was at Dolphin. And when they got down there to the dolphin, they went in by nighttime. And it camped around about in darkness. You see how the enemy always works underhanded in dark. And it camped around about the city to catch Elisha. And so when the young man, his servant, raised up early in the morning and went out, in other words, he was a fellow that take him in and out and around, was his servant right? When he went out, he come back and he said, Alas, my master, for the whole city is encamped about with horses and chariots of the enemy. He said, Well, there's more with us than there is with them. Well, he could see no one but Elijah. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, open the young man's eyes that he may see. And the Lord moves a veil from before the young man. And he looked, and the whole hills and mountains were full of chariots of fire standing around that old prophet. Well, he wasn't afraid then. Oh, well, I would think tonight, Lord, let us look past the curtain of time. Just look over, just a little peek. See what it's all about. We're fighting here tonight a great warfare right against wrong. Word of God against modern uh, theology and trying to make uh, the Word of God bring it to the people while the enemy would try to be set it in every way. But one is the majority in God. Now notice, the point I want you to see is that Elijah, the man who was of God, all the man of God, he did not look to the natural things. He looked to the supernatural things. He didn't look at what he seen. He looked at what he did not see. And tonight, dear Christian friends, we look at the unseen. That just came on my mind while Brother Baxter was giving that wonderful exhortation concerning the supernatural. The supernatural is what you do not see, but what you believe and act on as though it was. See? Everything in the Christian armor is supernatural. We do not look at what we see, we look at what we do not see. You cannot be healed only through looking at what you do not see. Someone wrote me a letter today a woman that was healed with cancer. She said, for the first two or three days, I was gloriously, I felt wonderful. Then on the third day that I had an awful upset, have I lost my healing? Now that should be explained in every, every case each night. No, that's the, the most perfect sign of your healing. After 72 hours of corruption setting in the growth, dead, it'll, it may be, God sometimes will, can perform a miracle and there won't even be any growth. Now, I can tell you this. God, who is my judge, who I stand before, I, by newspaper clipping, front page headlines, carrying this, it can be showed here at the platform. I've seen the time when people come to the platform with hanging cancer, hanging on their bodies. And while prayer was being made, the cancer turning white, dropping off, and rolling down across the floor while I was praying. God, who is in heaven and looks down, knows that truth. When newspaper reporters stand there and shoot the picture of it and declare it in the newspapers on the front page, that's Christian newspapers. 
where they got Christian editors, a man who believes God, and got a feeling for sickness for the law. Now, none of these things move us. God can reveal in my hotel room what you would ever know. So that's all right. All those things bear judgment and labor for judgment. Always let the Lord have his way. Now, I remember of one case. If someone would want to copy the paper, it may still be in case. Uh, the Arkansas Gazette, called the Sun, it's on the Associated Press. The big paper circulates many, many thousands of subscribers. Well, there stood on the platform or a picture. If you wish to, you might write to it and get a copy if you want to. And perhaps there might be a reporter standing around, which I know there is, so you can write yourself. Be satisfied. All right. Notice. On the front page, you'll see a great big page all the way across the front of the page. Picture. A woman pronounced dead, laying in the line, bringing from the hospital with cancer, the heart, colon, and liver, and told the nurse and man that was bringing her, pushing her through the street from Phoenix, Arizona, that the doctors told her husband, who, her name is Mrs. Hattie Wildwell, lives on Phoenix Street in Phoenix, Arizona, her husband owns a big plumbing establishment there. Dr. Bosworth is to be in the meeting, I understand, today. And just dinner tonight, he and I had dinner with her not long ago. And there, she had cancer of the heart, colon, and liver. And she was given just a matter of a few hours to live. When she come in the prayer line, she was two city blocks away. And she, her life was leaving her. She said, take me on. If I die, it's my request to come before the brother. And they told me after she's at the door, they had this thing over her face and said, there's a clap in the room. Well, they come by, her husband weeping, and I seen the woman, and I took a hold of her hand, held of her, she, seemingly she was cold. I do not know what her state was. And I began to pray for her and ask God to give her her life because her faith was green. And here, in a few moments' time, she raised up on the cross, went home, that's about three years ago, and her doctor has the x-rays. He came to the meeting and said, the only one thing I want to do is walk up and shake hands with Brother Branham and make this faith. And there, a Christian man that had been waiting on her, you can get his testimony now, said there isn't a trace of cancer about her nowhere at all. That'll be in one corner. And she come across there to this meeting to shake hands. And in the next corner, you'll see a place in there where there was a man, a GI, ex-GI, swollen so bad. When they brought him by plane, his legs were, his toes were that big around. Cancer. And was sitting there while praying for him. This is in the paper. While praying for him, the reporter said, I've seen with my own eyes. The swelling dropped from his limbs. And he hadn't been able to eat for weeks on account of his throat. And he eats a half of fried chicken and popped off with a pint of ice cream. And he went back home. Ever something. Brother Lindsay may have a copy of it here with him. He's got it. It all works with him or not. And in the next corner, you'll see across there of a minister who had a cancer. This was a reporter speaking himself. Hanging on his neck, called from a shaving cut about two years before, and it went into cancer. And he said, the cancer, when the man came to the platform, I looked at it, it was raw and bloody looking. And in a few moments, after the Reverend Mr. Branham prayed for the man, the cancer dropped out and rolled over his foot, and we picked it up, and here it is, and there's a deep cavity in his neck where it fell out. There was a man's picture sticking up there with a cavity in his neck where a cancer fell out. Jonesboro, Arkansas, the Arkansas Sun paper, right far. You want it? Get us your statement. All down through there. About 26,000 people had gathered in from all the way from Canada to Mexico. People who are simple and love God. Faith. Now we look at the unseen 
and believe that those things which are unseen but spoke of by God become realities. That's it. Many times it works in healing. There, last evening, I was trying here at the platform till I became in a subconscious condition of speaking to the people one by one. I've always wanted a time when I could get away from prayer cards, not have any prayer cards, so that the people with one accord would believe without anything else. He told me that I was to, these signs are only done to get the people to believe. He said, you were born in the world to take the divine healing to the people of the world. Then he said, people to believe that if you'll be sincere when you pray and get the people to believe you, nothing shall stand before the prayer, not even to cancer. Now that is true. I want to get to a place where there'll be no rally for prayer cards, but where everybody with one accord will believe and be healed and walk away. One day in a city, go to another. One day in a city, go to another, and thousands everywhere being healed, the glory of the Lord falling. That's what I want. Moses, upon his signs, he went and performed them one time before Israel. And they went a 40-year journey following him. Is that right? As performed at one time. Healed his hand of leprosy. Made six. He had walking sticks become a servant. Back to they believed. And when there was a lot of magic, impersonations done in that day, Jambers and Jambers withstood Moses. But God seen that his power always predominated and went over to the Always. They have a lot of true and false in this day. That's true. And the false will always want to say theirs is true, but by the these signs, God pronounced it so. And we don't have to take no one's word but God's word. His word is infallible. The vision, marvel. That's the initial way, just for a little story. The healing it comes on my mind. I quickly had the prayer on. I was going down at night down at my mother's house. I was praying. It looked like I got into a vision, something I wondered what was taking place. I looked. We raised very poor people. Mama, when she washes her clothes, she just lay them on a chair. Didn't have too much room to put them away. And just on a chair and in my room, I was thought it was a chair closed about one o'clock in the morning. Usually the visions come between one and three. <clears throat> then I was looking at that and I thought, that's mom's clothes. I thought, surely somebody's in need. Or I wouldn't feel that way. I don't get much sleep. I'm so tired right now. I can hardly stand here. That's right. Up at night. You people are praying. Remember, that affects me. See? When, when you're praying and asking for those things, it comes right back to me. And and it keeps me up many hours a night. And I thought, maybe that's what it was. And I began to wonder. After a while, it began coming closer to me. I noticed it was a white milling, like a cloud. And I went into the cloud. And when I did, I could hear a voice like a little lamb crying. Bah, bah. I was way in darkness. And I was wandering through it. And I thought, now, just a moment. Let me see now. It's so... I said, I'm not a dreaming. I remember I was at my bed of praying. This is Ephesian. I, I said, oh, where is it at, Lord? It's down through the darkness. I was trying to get to it, pulling briar vines and things. I listened again. And I get a hold of briars and they were sticking in my hand. And said, bad. Just crying. I was a poor little thing lost in the dark. And I was pulling through like that. I thought, Lord, I don't know what this vision means, but I'll try to get to the land. And as I got closer to it, it was a human thought. It was crying, Milltown, Milltown, real weak and crying. I thought, oh my, we're, we're Milltown, but I never heard of it. Well, I'll try to go, and I kept pulling on. After a while, I was going to hear somebody, Brother Branham, 
old brother Brown. And I, I woke up out of the station, looked around. I thought, where am I at? I was standing in the room, my hands up, and I heard somebody at the door, and it was calling me. Then when morning came, and I went to my church that evening, and I said, I had a vision. And I heard the name of Milltown. Does anyone know where it's at? No one knew. Following Sunday, I said, there's someone in trouble at a little place called Milltown. I'll probably get a, a letter somewhere. It'll call me to a city, Milltown. There's somebody in trouble. I don't know why it'll be. I just have to go there. I said, maybe you're out in some of the part of the nation. And while I was speaking, there was a man sitting there who said, Brother Branham, I know where Milltown is. It says, it's about this little bitty place way down on the southern 30, 40 miles below Jeffersonville or New Albany, down towards the southern part of Indiana. He said, I live near there. I said, what the house is spell? He said, M-I-L-L-T-O-W-N, Milltown. I said, that's it. And when he said that, I felt the Spirit of the Lord witness that was the place. So I said, I will find it. You tell me how to go. And he told me the highways. And I went to his house. And he led me to some many miles across the country to a little village. And I was there. That was Milltown. It was on a Saturday. Of what? All the people in the city moving around, doing their shopping. A little city of about a thousand population, hardly so many. And I, I said, well, maybe the Lord wants me to preach right here on the street corner. And I went in and give a man a dime for a an old soap box that I could stand on. I went out. I didn't know what to do but just go to Milltown. That was all I knew. And I said, there's somebody in trouble here. And I said, might be a drunk person or something. And I started to get up on the soap box and look around. I couldn't do it. it just something said, don't do this. Well, I set the soap box up. And a bunch of people won't ask me. said, what would you go to do with that? And I said, I'm a minister. I said, but uh, I feel that the Lord wants something else for me to do. Mr. Wright came out of the store. The man is with me. said, I've got to go up on the hill here to take a man some eggs. you want to go up with me? And I said, yes, sir. We went around the hill and came up. We passed by a big old church, big white church. And I said, that's a lovely old church overlooking the city. He said, that's the old Baptist church, Brother Brown. I said, what Baptist is? said, missionary. I said, oh, well, that's the Baptist. I said, what happened? He said, well, something went wrong here years ago. A minister got in some trouble and there was a big shooting scrape and said the church went down and the, the church people turned it over to the city. They just had funeral services. I went up towards the door and as I went towards the door, it seemed better. I tried to open the door and it wouldn't open. And I, I said, you go ahead. I'll wait here at the steps till you come back. When he went up on the hill, I knelt down and I said, Lord, if this is the place you want me, you want me to hold a meeting here, open this door for me open the door. I was, while I was yet in prayer, I heard someone coming around across the hill this way, and it was a man whistling. He said, uh, hello, preacher. I said, hello. He said, uh, you looking at the church? And I said, yeah. I said, you know, I was a preacher. He said, Mr. Wright said he was a preacher. I thought maybe you want to look into it. He just brought the key. Open the door. I said, thank you. I walked and looked around. I said, thank you. Head on the spot. Around a nice church, seated about 300 people. I said, Who owns it? said, The city. And I went down there to see them. And they bought electricity from the company, the public service company where I was then employed. And he said, Go ahead up there, put a meter in it. It's yours, as long as you want it. Thank you. And I put a meter in. I announced the revival for the following Sunday. That night, the day I went out, and I said to a man around close deal, I said, Sir, I said, I'm Brother Branham. I'm going to have a meeting up here. Will you come up? He said, look, preacher, we ain't got time for religion down here. We raise chickens. I said, all right, partner, but one of these days you're going to find time to die. Three weeks from then, they buried him. And so I went around on the side of the hill and met many others who were very indifferent. I started the meeting, and the first night I had Mr. Wright, his daughter, his two daughters, and his son, his wife, five people. I preached just as hard as I could. And so we went on the next night. We had the same group, only uh, about the time I was sitting in a platform reading some of the scriptures, had to drive quite a distance. And I heard something beating on the side of the house as a fellow knocking his old corn cob pipe against the house. Come in, uh, oh, a horrible looking fellow, the hair hanging down his face. He looked around like that, one, two thousand. 
buildings all around the building. So where is that little Billy Sunday they talk about? Mr. Wright, he told me, so there's a tough guy. He said he used to belong to Nazarene Church, but he's backslidden, he cursed every preacher or something like that. I went back and said, this is Mr. Hall, Mr. Bram. I said, I said, glad to know him. And you're the preacher? I said, you don't look like it. And ripped out one about that blankety blank like that. I said, will you sit down? I said, well, I might sit a little while. I like singing. And I said, well, we'll do our best to entertain you. Sit down. I said, will you come up forward? He said, no, I don't care to get up there. So I'll sit right here. But, All right, I have a phone book. Take yourself at home, sir. Walked on back up. Mr. Wright come up the platform and he got ready to start singing. So there's the worst hole it is in this country. And so I got up there and cut my text from the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell. Church. 
at Salem, Indiana. Her name was Nail, and how the Lord moved by vision, sent me way in the wilderness, hunt across the hills, and found her. And the papers carried the article of it, how she was healed, her legs straightened out, and everything. Just served the country through that. She, re- she went to school after that. The woman's married now. She's about 16 years old. About 20 now, I guess, 18, 20. And she was in an awful condition. She was telling me about that. Well, I've seen her faith was in the vision. I prayed for her and went out. All right? A few weeks after that, I told her, he said, if the Lord speaks to you, Brother Brown, come to me. I said, I would. I had to get real old. She couldn't raise her students up. She'd go to the house. She'd go, <laughs> and the mother would have to put the cup up like that. She couldn't even raise her hands. Her hands, her face here didn't have no flesh on it. It just looked like the bones of her skull. And her, uh, eyes weighing all the most. She couldn't turn her little head. And I looked back at her and I said, here a few days ago, I was down there and I looked at her little old bed. She took me in the shore to her. And there it was where all the paint was rubbed off of the rounds like that were year after year laying there hollering and crying, begging like that, holding on to that, rub the paint off of her bedpost like that. But God heard her cry, no matter what she was raised in. Then I, I went out and I was out holding a meeting. And I went to Mr. Wright's house a few days after that to have dinner. Then people down there said, uh, when we was having a baptismal service out on the banks of the river, and many of this same man's members that stand there, I walked out into the river, and I said, it seems like the angels of God are standing near. I started baptizing, and there are great candidates, one after the other, and all that man's church came right out into the water and was baptized with their good clothes on and all. Came right out. God will move. You just sit still and let God do it, see. That's right. Have faith in Him. He'll work it all out all right. And then I was going up that night. It was the last night of the service. I was going to have dinner with Mr. Wright. And we were up. And I said, Brother Wright, it seems to me that I must go to the woods to pray. The Holy Spirit's leading me not to eat but pray. And I went up in the woods and I knelt down. There was getting late in the afternoon. I'd pray, and every time I'd reach my hands up, I'd grab those briar vines, scratching my hands. I'd, it looked like I couldn't kneel. It hurt my knees. You know how it is. And I kept trying to pray, and I just fell down. I, she said, told me before I left, when the mother rings the bell, you come on to the to supper right now. And so I heard it ringing, but I was in the spirit praying, and I just stayed there. And I kept praying, oh, God, what is this burden on my heart? Have I done something or something you want? And I felt the angel of the Lord there, and I raised up, shining right down through a little dogwood bush with a yellowish green light. I heard a voice say, go by the way of Carter's. I raised from there and screamed to the top of my voice, down through the field I went. There'd been hunting hunt parties out searching for me. I jumped almost right in the arms of Brother Wright. He said, Brother Branham said, Mother's been waiting, supper on you for an hour. I said, we're going to be late to the closing service. I said, we're not going to supper. But this is the night, saith the Lord. Georgie Carter will be made ever with whole, just in a few moments. He said, Brother Ram, do you mean that? He says, if death coming from God, so this whole country will turn to God. I said, thus saith the angel of God, who's fed me since the days I was born on this earth, and has never lied to me, Georgie Carter will be a well woman in the next hour. Then the people began to gather on the hill and said, let us go. Two men, at the same time, her critical mother, Georgie was crying and praying because her mother had treated me the way she had. And so she went out in the kitchen and she knelt down to pray. She said, oh, God, said that reprobate that's come through the country here called Branham said, he's got my child all stirred up in there. And said, poor little thing laying there dying. And said, Dave, that she just cried and her little eyes were red. Said he's got her all stirred up about a lot of psychology. Said, oh God, put a curse on that man or do something like that. Going on with it all, praying. And when she began to pray, she thought her daughter, which lived next door, was passing by. She seen a shadow on the wall, and she let get her testimony concerning when you write to her. She said, as clear as she ever seen in her life, come Jesus walking right down across that wall and come to it, touch not my anointed. Said, who is that a coming? And he looked and said, she's seen me coming, just same Bible. I had over my heart like that, said, she's seen my hair thinning in the front. She said, well, that's that preacher. And she jumped up, she said, oh, was I asleep? Was I in a trance? Oh, what's happened? I'm losing my mind. And she ran into the room and said, Georgie, you know what? 
And about that time, the door closed, and here comes just according to the way she seen the vision. Here I come walk with a Bible over my heart, and two men followed me. Oh, my. There is a demon out of hell who can stop it, man. God has done the spoken prayers I answered. That's right. Something has to happen. I started walking up. Brother Hall kept saying to me, he said, Brother Brown, you want me to go first? I didn't say a thing. And friend, as your brother here tonight, I felt something leave me, and I looked like I could see myself walking up and set. I went to the door and opened the door. There she was laying there, poor little thing, and her lips a quiver, and her mother startled, couldn't finish telling her what had happened like that. I walked right over to the bed and put my hand on her. I said, Georgie, even Jesus Christ who gave me the vision of a lamb hung in the wilderness down here somewhere has appeared to me today in the woods and expect me here that I might lay my hands upon you that you should be well. I put her that hand. I said, as the Lord God has said to me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise up and be whole. And how is she going to raise up? Limbs up big around. Hadn't moved for nine years and eight months. Laying on the bed. But when God speaks, he gives strength. That's right. Take her by the hand. She looked at me like that. Her eyes looked like they set. And I took her by the hand and raised her from the bed. In less than a moment's time, she was walking to the house. She was screaming. Her mother pissed over her and cold, fainted. The girl opened the door and walked out, sat down on the grass, and began to bless the grass and bless the leaves and bless her little heart. The first time she'd seen the leaves of the grass for nearly nine, over nine years, and if she'd lay in a bed, and, and the people began to run from the neighborhood everywhere. I got one out, I went up towards the hill, towards the church. I couldn't stand around there. The morning was just buzzing all around me. Started up the hill. Here, she run back in the house, sat down at the piano. A few moments, her father came from across the hill with a little bucket of milk from where their barn was. Coming across, he seen the crowd. He began to hear the music. He said, watch, he got company. Listen to the people in there. When he walked in the door, there said his only beloved daughter. So they are playing, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There is the precious town. free to all the healing streams that pull from Calvary found them. Then, sitting there, he dropped his bucket and threw his arm around said, honey, what is Said, that one who you call the reprobate, Lord Jesus, the same here, he lays hands on me. And now I am well, and she's my piano player at the Milltown Baptist Church today. Perfectly normal and good of health, just as healthy as anybody that's sitting in this building tonight. Right here and find out. Here comes the doctor up that have waited on her. Jesus Christ. Amen. Just as great tonight as he was then. Look, people in here, this may seem strange to you. Maybe you're not strange for the prince of the power of the air. Satan is always near to try to get something bumbled up in your mind. But tonight, set your affections on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. And remember the Bible said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if his spirit be here, he reveals things today as he did in the days gone by. Heavens and earth will pass, but his word shall not pass. Have faith God. Do not pass. Right to Georgie, after that. Not only her, but I could stand here and some daylight breaks in the morning telling such cases that happened in the past four years. Day after day it happened. Infallible. God, dear now, your attitude. Tell them you to believe on the Lord with all their hearts. God. Ah, let's pray. Oh, God. Oh, and my lips could only form words. My tongue could only utter the phrases that do to you. Lord, you know about charges. You know all about it. Lord, you know your servant has told that which is true. 
and before these people at the great judgment I'll stand to give an account. If I told wrong, then I'll be a castaway. Turned away from my loved ones, turned away from Jesus. No hope condemned. Oh God, I don't want to do that. I want to be truthful and honest. And I know there's much unbelief in the world. You said in the last days there are great scoffers. Be heady, high minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Truth breakers, false accusers. In constant. Despisers of those that are good, even haters. And they would be a religious group having a form of godliness, but would deny the power thereof from such turn away. He said the Spirit spoke that expression that in the last days he signed to be. Father, we're here. We're happy as a disciple to carry the reproach of your Tonight we want to witness with Paul of old in the way to Paul heresy. So worship I, the God of our fathers. The way that evil spoken of, Paul heresy, insanity, crazy, neurotic. God truly, Satan's got his man on the job, and I'm thankful you've got yours also. And we're glad to be on your side tonight, believing all things. And we're glad that you're with us, confirming the word with signs and wonders follow. Let people see, Lord, and turn from their wickedness and turn to Christ tonight. Before it's everlasting too late, or they're blasted from the face of the earth to go to a devil's hell and a crisis grave to spend an endless eternity. Without God, without a hope, without a this is the day of repentance. This is the day of man. The day of the Lord shall come. Now help us, God. You've got many of your children here tonight gathered sick. You've moved on them as you did Simeon in the days of old and brought them here for the purpose of being healed. Help me to have faith with them, Father. May their faith blend together and all of us as one now. One unit. Our prayers going constantly without ceasing. As his spring at John Mark's house, so without ceasing, you sent an angel down, opened the prison doors, and took the apostle out. Many of your children have been prisoned by afflictions, sicknesses, and diseases. May the angel of God come upon your servant tonight and break every chain. Grant of ours. May we go out of the city gates rejoicing, happy, praising God for his goodness. In the name of his holy child, Jesus, we ask this question. Amen. I say, don't die. I take a lot of the time, I'm sorry. I'm standing here knowing that many may not get into the line. If they don't, then if you've got your faith upon God's word, you'll be healed in you. you believe that, lady? With all your eyes. The little lady's a little baby. You're in trouble, aren't you? Sis? God bless you. I see you have a weary spirit. Isn't that right? Look this way. I feel sorry for you. Yes, you're it's not you. You're worried about your baby. Isn't that true? Just a while ago, you were praying or doing something. But you was asking God to let me speak to you about that baby. Isn't that right? I'm not reading your mind, I felt it a while ago. There's a whole group in that corner there. That's what made your baby. Do you realize that Jesus healed that baby when he died by Gunner Cow? He paid that price. Now your baby, what's wrong with it? Your baby's about 
three years old, I guess, something like that. Isn't that about time? And it stopped growing. It has no use to it. Is that true? Will you believe me? All right. If you'll believe, accept it freely right now. There it is, set alone in the mother's arms now, without even any holding it on. She's got her arms away from it. Let's say it's praise the Lord. The baby has you in his back now. All right. Now everybody be reverent. A little girl sitting right there next to you. Sweetheart, do you believe Brother Brandon telling you the truth? The little girl there with the bad eyes. You go believe Jesus to make you well. You do. All right, I want you to put your little hand over your eyes like this. Say, dear Jesus, heal me. God bless you, honey. You shall have your sight. Lady, why are you worrying about sitting next to her there? The anxious, crying. Look this away, sister. Something's wrong with you. Yeah? You also have bad eyes, too. And you're a nervous case, aren't you? Have a real de a demon depression. Isn't that right? Oppression just bothers you all the time nervous. Isn't that right? God bless you. If I tell you that you're evil, will you believe me? All right, go home and you're evil. How do you think about it, sister? You do? I see you're having troubles also, aren't you? I'll be reverent. Everyone has crossing fears. This little cute boy sitting here so me out. Everyone just as reverent as you can be. Look here, sister. You're worried about something. There's something wrong because it's real dark around. You you've been to a doctor recently. Haven't you? And you've had an examination. Now let's see. Have faith. Believe me with all your heart. Yes, you had a female trouble. He's not too sure about that, and he's right. He said it was, might be cancer. Is that right? All right, it is. Or it was, rather. You're healed, man. You have your healed. Now look this away, sister. You believe that? Please be reverent, everyone. Don't let, let it be reverent, please. Quickly. There's something. There's something. A connection. You here, sir, sitting here with the bars of healing in your hand, sitting on a front seat. There's some connection between you and this woman. You were so happy when she was here. But maybe your it's your sister or your wife on. It's your wife, isn't it? That's right. Your father too. You was. You and your wife go home and be happy for your healed. What about you, sister, sitting there crying? You're in nervous trouble, isn't that right? All right. God has healed you also. You're... How'd you buy your head for, honey, right behind that little girl? You're in a lot of trouble, too, aren't you? Huh? No trouble, is it? This can be operated on, is that right? You're up for an operation. You're supposed to operate on your children, isn't that right? All right, believe the Lord right now and be healed. Will you do that? Have, have faith in God. He's sure to make it. Now, just a moment. There's somebody right in here very weary and very suffering. Just a moment. There's so many I can't already that. That's a very serious case, wherever it is. Just a moment. Yes. Here it is. It's a lady sitting right here. With that flowerly, black, flowerly dress on. Aren't you in trouble, sister, with suffering? Isn't that right? Isn't that true? Uh, oh, God, look this way. Yes, sister. Something must be done for you. You're full of tumors. Is that a tumor or something in you? Raise up. Is that true? Have faith in God and your tumor shall leave. You believe with all your heart? Now watch, I... You feel better now, don't you, sister? Here on the side of the seat. Yes, yes, ma'am. It's over now. You're going to be well. 
the lady, your friend sitting there, keep talking to you. You're just wondering why I didn't call you, wasn't you? That's what you was wondering. I'm not reading your mind. But you was wondering why I didn't catch you there. I can't tell you what's wrong with you yet, sister. Stand up on your seat, will you? I believe with all your heart. See, I get you above where those other vibrations are coming so fast, I can't... Uh, just a moment. Hold your hand out like this. I'm not too sure something. Double your fist like this. Put it around behind you. Like this. Way back. Way back like mine. You touch the then it's your liver. Is that right? That's how I didn't worry the kidneys or your liver. All right, Jesus Christ, make sure I hold, sister. Go and be able to do it. Have faith in God. Jesus for healing me. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Give me praise. 